Welcome back. Aggie Nation, powered by the Eagle, Aubrey Bloom, Robert Sestin. We're brought to you by MSC Opus. Check out all the great events coming to the season that dreams are made of at mscopus.org. And you can give us a call, 693-1150, or you can text us at 229-1939. We are joined now, as we are every Monday, by former Texas A&M quarterback, Stephen McGee. Stephen, let's just dive right in. Watching that A&M LSU game for a former quarterback uh, it had to be difficult. Yeah, it was. <laughs> it, just another one of those blah experiences um, on the couch watching, you know, a team that has been at times um, showing a lot of explosiveness and a lot of ability, and then at times it just seemed like, man, we, we look so average for guys that seem to be more talented than most schools are able to recruit coming into this school. What are we doing with them uh, once they get here? So, that question keeps popping up, I think, in a lot of people's minds, and certainly mine, you know, sitting there watching uh, watching this team play. Let's talk about the, the quarterbacks. In, the, in this game, it was Kyle Allen, and, and he might – we don't have any sort of update on his injury. He suffered at the end of the game. But from what we talked about at the beginning of the season and what you wanted to see out of Kyle when they opened the game at Arizona State to where he was at the end of the season, you know, I think for the average fan, they're going to go, I don't know that he got any better – do you think he he got better? And if so, what what did he get better at? Yeah, I think he did get better. I, I think going through some growing experiences and the pain of losing and having doubters, I think that stuff that we've talked about throughout this year and his development uh, away from the field and as a leader and as a guy that has to be able to handle adversity, I think he has grown from that. I haven't spent time with him. Ho- hopefully he has it. I think his play showed that he can bounce back from adversity. I think as on the field as a, as a quarterback, though, you saw him get more decisive as the year uh, went on after he came back from Kyler starting there for a couple games. And I thought the ball came out quicker. I thought he threw it more decisively. He has thrown the ball accurately the last couple games. I've been impressed with that. I don't see him right now as a guy – uh, that certainly arrived. I think he has a long way to go to get to where his expectation is, certainly the expectation that he arrived at A&M with as a quote-unquote five-star quarterback. Uh, for him to be a five-star junior quarterback, he's got a long way to go. And for him to be a five-star senior quarterback at A&M, he's got a long way to go. Uh, he hasn't arrived at that point yet, but I think he has gotten better. At Most importantly, he started to limit turnovers. He had a bad one the other night can't take a sack in the red zone, can't turn the football over in the red zone. Those are golden rules as a quarterback. But all in all, I've I've been impressed with him. I don't think the quarterback position is what held us back the last two weeks. When you look at uh, Allen compared to maybe what quarterbacks were looked at you know, 10 years ago when you, when you were coming out of high school, is there unfair expectations on, on younger quarterbacks because of the rare exceptional ones that have been so good so young? Yeah, you know, we look at Johnny Manziel, a university uh, in the not-too-distant past who had a lot of success with a team that was probably under-talented compared to most in the SEC at that time and watched him lead an offense at an incredible rate uh, with a lot of ability at a very young age. And so I think we get spoiled, and that's now our expectation, that bar, so to speak. And now we bring in these guys that were – even more highly recruited or thought of in high school than Johnny was, per se. Now we expect them to be at least to Johnny's level. So, yeah, we we do get spoiled. But on the flip side, there are still quarterbacks that are playing in big-time football conferences as freshmen that are having an impact to come to mind that have really stood out to me. The, The UCLA kid, uh, has done an incredible job, in my opinion. Not to say that e- any of these guys are without their uh, blemishes. Certainly they're going to go through growing pains just like our quarterbacks are. It's hard to play freshman quarterback in big-time football conferences because there's such a big learning curve from high school. But then the second one is the Baylor kid that just recently got hurt, the guy that started the season out as a backup quarterback. God, this guy really has impressed me. He's just got it all, in my opinion. He's got a great uh, tight throwing motion. Ball comes out quickly got a strong arm. A lot of the things you really look for on the NFL level jumped out to me when I I saw him play. So, you know, there are guys that do come in and exceed expectations at a a young level to answer your question. Not that Kyle has fallen short of that, but 
there's just growing pains, I think, that guys go through developing into that good quarterback. And everybody's different. You know, it just takes more time, more experience for some guys to get to that point. So I don't think that uh, by any stretch of the imagination that we're not still very lucky to have some, some good quarterbacks in our stable. When you were, were playing and, and there were teams that, for whatever reason, you just couldn't beat, did that start to, to wear on you as a player? I mean, I, I don't know if it was something you talked about with teammates or ever really thought about, but did that stick in your head? I don't know if it was – I, I think I want to say during your years it was probably Texas Tech, but was, was yeah, there anyone yeah. that just kind of stuck with you all you know, throughout the off season and into the next year like it seems LSU is right now? Absolutely. Like you said, Texas Tech is a big one. Oklahoma – was another one that we just couldn't quite get past for whatever reason. I just, you know, I don't know that teams, players, individuals practice or prepare any differently for any game. I don't think that that's necessarily in their mind at any point of the week. Now they know the opponent's good. They obviously have a lot of respect for the opponent because they haven't had a lot of success with them, so they know they're going to have to play well to beat them. I don't think they put any more added pressure, though. I, I haven't felt that as a player. I haven't sensed that from other guys. I do know that there's seems to be an added sense of urgency during the practice week. Guys are more focused, which is a very good thing. But at the end of the day, despite that added focus, that added attention and, and good uh, practices leading up to those big games, it didn't seem like they had a lot of effect on the score, uh, as, as we all know. We, we seem to really got beat and beat bad uh, by Tech a lot of times. And so I don't know if that is – you know, just a matchup deal. We never matched up good against Texas Tech. Our offensive philosophy, uh, they scored a lot of points, and our offense wasn't designed to score a lot of points. We tried to do ball control. So the fact that we got down early really hurt us. Where this team now matched up against LSU, um, you know, LSU has great defense, as they seem, seem to year in, year out. This seems to be a year where we could kind of take advantage of maybe a defense that isn't quite the caliber they had been in the past, but we didn't do that. And so um, – you know, all in all, I don't know what it is. I think most importantly, it's it's a it's a matchup thing, uh, and for whatever reason, LSU's done a great job of of you know taking advantage of those those matchups out there. I, I got to ask because of the Texas Tech thing. If that is the the bowl matchup for A and M, we talk a lot of times how bowl games and, and they don't really do anything for uh, for fans emotionally. Last year's game against West Virginia was, you know, kind of a ho hum sort of bowl season. Would a matchup with Texas Tech would that would that fire you up and some you know, as a fan would that get you a little bit excited about the bowl game? Absolutely. I think being able to play any Texas team, whether that's Texas Tech, whether that's TCU, whether that's Texas has some added intrigue just because those are people and friends and relatives and whatnot. Certainly we want to sit around and talk trash about how much better the SEC is. They want to tell us that the SEC is overrated and vice versa. So, you know, I definitely think that there's a lot more excitement when A&M lines up against teams that we haven't been able to play for the last couple of years. Obviously prefer to play Texas. But, you know, the matchup there with Cliff Kingsbury, obviously I've been here working with someone. There's a lot of interesting dynamics there. Probably a lot of guys on our team right now were recruited by Cliff Kingsbury. So he knows our offense. We know his offense pretty well. It makes for an interesting football game for sure. And a lot of trash talking. It'd be fun to, <laughs> to beat up on Texas Tech a little bit. I know that. Steve, in your experience, where A&M's facing an off season here, there probably Kevin Sumlin's going to have to make changes on offense, whether it's personnel or whether it's scheme. How does a coach go about that? The coaches you've been around, how do they implement that? How does that work? Uh, yeah, you know, I've never been a coach. I, I don't want to speak for them or how that they do that. But I, I think that the game is constantly changing, and. With the amount of technology available for coaches now, they can really break down what has been successful throughout the course of the season pretty easily um, through all the data systems and whatnot. And I think being able to use that data and say, man, you know, this offense uh, had a lot of success against these types of defenses that we play in the SEC. Uh, this guy's philosophy really made a lot of sense. And then I think uh, there's a lot of relationships in that coaching business, a lot of turnover, obviously from year to year. And so those guys throw up a network of, you know, they get fired one place and go to another one. I think it's just finding the right guys that work together and can bring out the best in 
the group of guys that they have and have the coach. But most importantly, I think for Kevin Sumlin, when he if he does decide to go out and bring in extra people or change roles or move that around, it is finding a offense that is able to effectively score points in the SEC, you know, whether that's a spread or, you know, you look at a guy like, you know, Alabama, you know, they run more of a pro style offense, Georgia. It, it's interesting, you know, which side of the coin, you know, Auburn had a lot of success in the spread, Mazon, Gus Mazon, I can't say his name, but anyway, <laughs> you know, those guys, you know, it, the, the offensive philosophy seemed to always be changing. You know, you had the, that Auburn offense that had a lot of success, but it's just really gone flat the last couple of years. And, Currently, you've got a lot of spread teams that are throwing for a lot of yards. And, man, now it seems to be some of these teams that are running the ball really well or having a lot of success here late in the year, cold weather games, and build, building around good defense. So the game, to answer your question, is always changing. And it's finding that current trend that works within your conference to be able to match up well and win football games. And here's the interesting thing to think about. In years past, you would say, well, A&M is not going to be able to recruit the level of talent like Alabama, LSU, Auburn. But now we've been able to go assemble the talent that we need so we can pick what offense we want. We don't have to be spread offense like Texas Tech used to have to be to level the playing field or conversely like Georgia Tech and power, you know, run the wing tee just to level the playing field because you can't go out and recruit the good guys. So you got to do something different that really stretches defenses. So, man, I think the availability for a guy that comes to A&M right now is is wide open. So it'll be interesting to see what happens. Last thing, Stephen, before before we let you go for the, for the regular season is, you know, after watching the 12 games and, you know, A&M got ranked pretty highly there for a while and then it's sort of a disappointing middle of the year and kind of bouncing back, what would you like to see in the bowl game, whether it is Texas Tech or whether it's someone else, specifically as far as the offense or defense or whatever, to kind of get you fired up for next season and to think, all right, yeah, this sure this, year, this season didn't end the way we wanted to, but I saw this and, and now I think we're set to have a big year next year. Well, I am a firm believer that quarterback play drives football teams. I don't care what offense you run, uh, what defense you run, who you got on defense. What At the end of the day, you want to win football games consistently on any level of football, you've got to have good quarterback play. If our quarterback plays good football, I believe our defense will play better. If we're scoring points, we're moving the football I believe our receivers are going to play better. Our running back will play better. I believe the level of play of everybody on that football team will rise. I believe coaches are better when your quarterback is making good decisions. And so, for me, I look at it, and if we can get through this bowl game uh, with Kyle Allen, continue to get the ball out quickly, throw the ball accurately like he's done, and limit turnovers, I would be excited and say, hey, man, he really did progress. He took 15 days of extra practice during the bowl season and developed as a passer, uh, that would give me a lot of confidence moving into next year and being excited uh, that this team can really rally around and build around Kyle Allen and his ability to throw the football. So that's that's my number one takeaway. I believe that we will win and lose football games, uh, and we will be as good as our quarterback will allow us to be at this university. So uh, all in all, uh, no pressure on Kyle Allen, but I believe <laughs> that, you know, for us to be the team and – to have the success like Alabama, we're going to have to get it from the quarterback position. There we go. Steven, I want to thank you for being on with us all season. We'll try to get you on as we get close to the bowl game, but thanks for being on with us every Monday. Great stuff as usual. Hey, thanks, guys. Uh, Giggle Mags, hope you guys had a good Thanksgiving. Seth, you need to go hit the treadmill. I know you ate too much, man. <laughs> <laughs> thanks, Steven, buddy. <laughs> See you guys. There you go. Always fun stuff oh, yeah. from uh, Steven. Yeah, I think you made some good points there. Yeah. And, and the, the thing that, you know, it, it's easy to – lump everything on at the end. But, yeah, I, I liked what he said about Kyle Allen, that he did get better as the season went on. Now, he's not good enough yet to be the, mm-hmm. the star in the middle of A&M's offense, but maybe he's getting there. And I thought that was And also point. what I like, I like what he said is A&M has arrived, really, what he said is as, as, as a university. They can do whatever they want to. They can go out and get the best players because they have the best facilities, the best fans, everything. Now they just have to run whatever Kevin Sullivan wants to run to have success. They don't have any, any, any gimmicks. They can go out, and we talked about that in the first hour. He's got to make decisions of who they are and then just move forward and have success. All right, we'll go to break. When we come back, 
Let's talk some basketball. Hoops. How about that? 229-1939. It's Aggie Nation, powered by the Eagle here on Sports Radio 1150 in the Zone FM.